Hey everybody. I'm gonna wait till uh, I can see a couple people come on and then do a little bit of talking. Let's see if I can. I'll, I'll get the glare up my glasses. I've got a glare, you'll just have to live with it. Alright. Hey there. Right, let me pull out. Alright. I can see a couple people on and people can tune in later and watch it if they want to. Um, I've just kind of been doing some some thinking, some, some chewing on some things. Um, I guess a lot of you know by now that Narayan Matt is no longer with us. That, that she died in Child Protective Services custody on Thursday afternoon. And it never should have happened. And I got a call from another mom today, this morning, just really worried about the, quote, protection that her kid's getting in Child Protective Services. So I want to talk about a couple things. When we talk about Child Protective Services, the, the whole entire justification for Child Protective Services is that we're protecting kids from abuse. Now, no moron in your right mind is going to justify abuse of children, okay? Let me just say that straight out. It is not okay to abuse kids. It's not okay to molest kids or rape kids. If you think that, then just go away. Don't even talk to me, okay? It, it's not okay. So, we, uh, the public, wanted protection for children, okay? That, that's good. That's, that's a good thing. We want to protect children. But what have we done in the name of protecting children? How many children are dead? How many children are being abused? How many kids are being molested? How many children are being trafficked? And when they get, when they grow up, you know, look at the statistics. Kids that were, have, that were in foster care are much more likely to be in prison, much more likely to have teenage pregnancy, much more likely to be homeless, much more likely to be on drugs, all these things. Because you know what? Kids need parents. They need their real parents. Abuse is bad and that's a crime. Okay, and I found out something about st the statistics, uh, the little, the mad faces, and I know you're mad, but apparently in the algorithms that makes, um, it makes Facebook think that they don't need to show the thing to so many people because of the mad faces. So, um, and I understand being mad about Child Protective Services. But, okay, abuse is a crime. All of these things are crimes. And that's where law enforcement comes in. That's where you call the police. Call the police. Child Protective Services is not helping. They're taking children every single day all across this country from from innocent parents, okay? And and the data is there and they know this. This is federal data, and I've, t I've shared this with you before. Um, at least 80% of the kids that are taken from their parents are not taken for reasons of abuse. And again, in another place, federal statistics, federal statistics, um, at least 80% of the, um, of the uh, allegations against parents are unsubstantiated. When, um, and in, uh, let's say, Kansas, then they brag on that, what, 94% of the allegations are unsubstantiated. There's many states where it's way over 80% of the allegations against parents are unsubstantiated. In other words, they hadn't even got enough evidence for, to convince a kangaroo court that doesn't require actual evidence and that doesn't require actual proof and hearsay is admissible for evidence. So, and they can't even manage to, to convince a court in those situations that it happened. So, you know, so even the ones that are substantiated, there's a lot of that that's really not real. It doesn't happen. It's not legitimate. So, you know, if a parent has really abused their kids, they're probably arrested. They probably got arrested and they're probably in jail. Now, unless you're talking about a shaken baby syndrome, which is based on junk science and the, pro the parents a lot of times are innocent, or unless you're talking about some of the brittle bones conditions where, again, many of the parents are innocent because there's a medical condition causing the multiple broken bones. Okay, there are innocent people even in prison and have gone to death row for abuse that they didn't do. 
because they were innocent because it was based on junk science and doctors um, that haven't figured out and didn't do their due diligence to figure out what was actually going on. Okay, but aside from those, if a parent has actually been abusive, they usually get arrested. They make the headlines. You see it. But I want you to pay attention to what you see in the headlines when you when you when you see these stories of these kids being horribly abused. Go into the story. Go into the story because it'll say the mom or fa the mother or father or whatever did it. But if you go into the story, most of the time you'll find out that it was the foster mother or foster father or maybe the boyfriend of the mother and that happens a lot of times too so women choose who you're going to have at living at your house taking care of your kids choose wisely don't choose some low-life scum who's going to beat your kid you know if that's what you're going to do you know let your let your mom and your aunt your your best friend somebody let somebody else take care of your kids if you're going to choose a low life scum who's going to beat or you know have sex with your kids you really want to have sex with a man who's having sex with your kids you know just dump those guys okay really they're not worth it um i know god loves them but you don't have to have them around your kids so okay i got off on a tangent there um but statistically, let's go back to our philosophy of protecting children. We want to protect children. Yes, absolutely. Children are a gift from the Lord and they are our responsibility. We want to protect them. But if statistically less than 20% um, are actually taken for even allegations of abuse, so two out of 10, so in order to protect those two out of ten, you're going to take ten kids. And we also know that a child in foster care is at least, at least, six times more likely to be raped, molested, abused, or killed in foster care than if you'd left them in their own home. Okay? So you've got these other eight kids that were not taken for reasons of abuse or, um, and, 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 this may or may not be true that this actually happened. Hold on a second. Um, so you're going to risk these other kids, these other eight kids, you're going to risk them being much more likely to be beaten or molested or, or any of those things, okay? Is that really worth the risk? So... So say you you say you save these two kids. Maybe these were legitimate and you actually save these two kids, but you take eight more. You've traumatized those other eight by taking them away from their family. Okay, separating a kid and their parents is traumatizing. I don't care what age it is. It's traumatizing. You know, how many Hallmark movies are when somebody's elderly dad died or their mother died at 40? At Christmas shoes, you know, the mama died. This kid was, you know, eight ten years old it's traumatizing to lose your parent it's traumatizing to be separated from your parent but you've separated all of those kids all eight of those kids in order to protect the theoretical two kids that you you think you're protecting just in case you know in the best interest of the child well that's not in their best interest it's traumatized them sometimes permanently I mean, these kids that come back home, they've got nightmares. They've got night terrors. They're scared of cops. They're scared of people that look like social workers. They don't do as... They're, they're traumatized. They've got post-traumatic stress from being taken away from their parents. So you've subjected them just to that. Is And you have to ask, is it really worth it? A government, is it worth these programs to take all these children away from their parents just in case and traumatize them, on, uh, you know, in order to save the couple of them? Um... And I'm not saying those couple aren't, aren't, don't hear me saying those couple aren't worth being saved. But you should have called the police and there should be a police investigation and somebody needs to be in jail for arresting, for, I mean, for abusing them. But back to these other kids. Now you've got, what if four out of these eight that you took um, end up being abused in that foster home? And then six out of those eight... Uh, end up on the streets when they turn 18 and no don't realize that their family really did love them because one thing that that i've learned in many many of these cases almost all of them as soon as they take a child but, but usually they're not even they, they can still see your house and the social worker is telling them in the car your mama doesn't want you anymore yet yeah, lying old hussy um they tell them this they tell them this i mean we 
but Tabitha Shores had one of the social workers or the parents, the foster parents that aren't really parents, the foster people told her son that their mother had died. What? I mean, seriously, they told this little boy that they took away from his family, from all of his siblings and his mom and daddy, and then they tell him that his mama died too? But that really happened. Yeah, that happened in Arizona. So let's rethink this whole paradigm of protecting children. We all want to save the children. You know, you want to do the pageant wave. I'm driving. I can't do the pageant wave. You want to save the children and rescue the children. Yes, I understand that. But how many children are we going to destroy in the process of making yourself feel good and thinking that you're helping some kids that you're really actually not helping? Okay? Let's look at these kinds of things when we're talking about financing and budget and, and, uh, and, and politicians, I'm talking to you. Pastors, I'm talking to you. Legislators, I'm talking to you. We've got to change the way we do things because this is not working. It's kind of, you know, back, most of you know that I used to be an assistant midwife and labor doula um, back in the day, childbirth educator. And the C-section statistics and the, the interventions where we were using um, all these interventions, and we do. We, we use all kinds of unnecessary interventions on parents just in the, in the hope of preventing one or two um, complications. And we're causing all kinds more problems. We've got, the, we've got one of the highest... Um, maternal mortality rates in the Western world. We've got some of the highest infant mortality rates in the Western world. That's a lot of vaccines and a lot of interventions in birth. So the thing is, we're not the, the, the fix that we're using to fix the problem is making the problem much much worse. And we are spending billions, multiple billions of dollars of tax dollars every year to have an inadequate fix for the problem. A, a, a fix that's making things far, far worse. We're destroying future generations. Future generations. You know, these parents and I know a lot of you are on here and you're listening, parents, that when, when you grow old, you don't have your children there to help you, to take you to, uh, when you can't drive anymore, to take you to the grocery store, to, uh, to celebrate Christmas, to um, go to church together and get you, get you so, you're, so you've got your family. It, it's, it's destroying the generations, the future generations. It's destroying our heritage. There's so much more at stake here that's happening. It's not, it, it's not just, oh, we got this kid in foster care that maybe shouldn't have been, but just, you know, overall, no, overall, it sucks. Overall, we're screwing up bad, bad, guys. It's just not good. So it's time for a paradigm shift. And I know I see all kinds of comments, but I'm driving. Uh, it's some, for some reason, this ends up being my best time for me to, to end up doing a Facebook Live. So I, I get kind of philosophical as I'm driving and, and meditating on things. So, but what I want to do, let, and I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, to, to join me and let's pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come back into our country and, and change this. We know, Lord, that family is your idea. God, you made Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father and Son, that's a family relationship. Before the, before the dawn of human history, you had that in mind. You created family, and Lord, the, the enemy is destroying our children left and right and using good, good, well-meaning people to do so, using our politicians, using our tax dollars to do so. And Lord, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would reverse this curse, that you would change this, that you would restore, as you said in, the, in Malachi, you said that in the last days you would return the hearts of the children to the parents and the hearts of the parents to the children. And Lord, I ask that you would do that and you would restore and you would stop these evildoers, these wicked people in the name of Jesus. You stop them from stealing our children, from destroying our children, from destroying 
destroying parents. And I come against every spirit of depression and suicide right now in the name of Jesus. Kids that are suicidal because they've been taken away from their families. Parents that are suicidal because you've, you're, you're facing the holidays without your children. I, I, I come against that spirit of suicide and I say, no, in the name of Jesus, stop that you will live, that you will choose to live, that you will choose to overcome no matter what happens. You will choose to overcome. You will choose to not let these people destroy you. Make the choice, make the decision to fall on the Lord and, and rely on His strength. Because I know in our, in our own strength, we can't do it. But Lord, I ask that you would give each parent, each child, each teenager the strength to go through this, to, to come out on the other side victorious. And Lord, I ask that you would raise up warriors, um, raise up people um, in, in our churches, in our communities, in, in, our, in our states, in our cities, Lord, to, to come alongside these people and, and, and recognize and stop accusing, recognize what's going on and, and stop the accusations. Um, and I thank you, Lord, that, that you're bigger than this and that you can you can help and lord we, we cry out like moses uh like the people the children of israel did before moses came along we say the lord deliver us lord deliver us what well, lord we say to pharaoh we say to the to the government agencies let our children go in the name of jesus let our children go. Stop this tyranny. Stop using our children for experiments. Stop using our children to make a dollar. Lord, give these people, bless these people with new jobs. Bless these people with a, jo a desire to have another hobby. Something to occupy their time besides stealing children. And Lord, we thank you that Jesus came to this earth as a baby on and one Christmas morning, 2,000 years ago, he brought hope. And I look at this Christmas season, and I think, of, and, I, and, I, and I was thinking the other day, I thought, how can, how can we celebrate Christmas when so many people don't have their children with them, when there's so much hurt? And, and then I thought, no, we do celebrate because Jesus represents the hope. When he came 2,000 years ago, into human history and brought hope to the people that were being oppressed. He came as a baby. The deliverance didn't come immediately. It was secured with his death on the cross and the resurrection. But he brought hope and he brought change. Like real hope and real change, like, like the good kind. And I thank you, Jesus, for that hope and Lord I ask that you would restore hope to every single person watching here and that you would you would bless each person and that you would renew the ability and and courage and strength to fight to stand up and fight having done all to to stand and and Lord that you would you would turn things around Lord I ask that this next year 2018 would be the year of the turnaround the year that we see this completely turned around that we see paradigm shifts happen and I thank you Lord for your goodness and I thank you Lord for 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 drawing attention to what's going on and I thank you that you're going to change things amen and just one little final thing before I close off here um Make sure you watch, if, if you can find a way to get CRTV channel on Wednesday, um, December 13th, is Michelle Malkin is doing part two of her documentary on uh, medical kidnapping. Could your family be the next Justina? Everybody give Michelle Malkin props. Thank her for, for covering this. Share it. Uh, share the story. Share the, um, the promo when it comes out. And she is, she's affiliated with Fox News. Some, she, she appears on Sean Hannity's show. She's got a lot of favor with a lot of um, conservative people that, that, that have no clue that this stuff is going on. There's a lot of people really that don't know what's going on. And like I've said before, be kind when people come in and say, well, wow, I can't believe this is happening. Well, and, and I talked, I mean, I talked to somebody at Walmart this morning. Had no idea this stuff was happening. Okay, 
the message is not really out there and and for the most part it's only people that know the people that know about it are the ones who have sadly experienced it themselves with their family or somebody they love and care about so let's keep on getting the word out pray god we're, guys, we're seeing some miracles. We're seeing th- some deliverance. We don't always see it. And sometimes we have the ultimate the ultimate casualty like we saw this week with Neriah. Y'all pray for Jasmine. I can't imagine what she's going through. This was so unnecessary. She was healthy. I mean, she was small. She had that trisomy 9, but she was okay when she went into care. They killed her, and they killed her. Flat, straight up, they killed her, like they killed baby Stefan. And we got to stop this. So, um, guys, love y'all. Mwah. Be blessed, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.